like this weird competition of cool. You take a reef shot to the side of the head for a wave like that. If I can win this, this will be the greatest moment of my life. All the girls are surfing so well. They're beautiful inside and out. Going skagless is a whole nother realm. It's like a fast version of body surfing. The power surfing is like a lot of like that style and grace with some aggression and harnessing all of those things in one and, and creating your own style. My job description is student. Student of surfing. Board Stories Television is proudly produced in association with Free Surf Magazine. Subscribe today with the QR code or visit freesurfmagazine.com. Aloha, I'm Mike Latronic, along with Pua DeSoto, and we hope you're ready to ride because we've got an incredibly action-packed edition of Board Stories TV. Once again, let's take a look at the Bonsai Pipeline, but this time we're gonna check out one of my personal favorite events, the Dehui Backdoor Shootout. With the world's best shortboarders, longboarders, and stand-up paddlers on hand to chase the heaviest slabs, the Backdoor Shootout always has high-level intensity. We'll get up close and personal with a profile on rising pipeline performer, Kala Grace. There's plenty of chills, thrills, and spills, and the waves were absolutely pumping. The Dahui Backdoor Shootout is a legendary surf competition that has been held annually for over four decades on the North Shore of Oahu. The competition is named after the iconic surf break known as Backdoor, which is actually the right-hander off of Pipeline Lefts. The history of the Hui Backdoor Shootout can be traced back to the early 1980s when the surf club known as Hui Ohe'e Nalu started holding informal surf contests at the infamous wave. At the time, surfing was still seen as a niche sport and was not yet the global phenomenon that it is today. Club leader Eddie Rothman and the Hui were determined to showcase the talent and skill of the surfers who rode the North Shore's powerful waves, and the Backdoor Shootout was born. Historically, the competition has been an invitation-only event. Dahui wanted to keep the contest exclusive and only invited the best surfers to participate. This made the competition a highly anticipated event with surfers from around the world clamoring for a chance to compete. Held in the winter months when the North Shore was pounded by the biggest and best waves of the year, the Dahui Backdoor Shootout has become one of the most prestigious surf contests in the world. Today, the Dahui Backdoor Shootout is a major event that draws surfers from all over the planet, as well as thousands of spectators who come to watch the surfers battle it out in powerful surf. The contest continues to be a celebration of the sport of surfing and a testament to the skill and bravery of the surfers who dare to tackle the North Shore's legendary waves.
the swell forecasted for the Dehui Bacter shootout, so of course there is never a dull moment. At times, the waves are maxing out on the outer reefs. But don't take my word for it. Here's what Kelly Slater, Hi Lenny, and others have to say. Uh, conditions are perfect, format's cool. It's a lot less stress. It's a different way to surf the heat. You're not really, you're not trying to beat anybody. You're just trying to get good waves over the long haul. So I think this is the ultimate format. It's amazing that the Hui Backdoor Shootout gives the opportunity to so many Hawaii surfers and people from around the world to score epic pipe. And I think they have the best window in the waiting period too. Oh my God, it's been so crazy. I mean, we actually got lucky with the first heat of the day today. I was like, the conditions are so good. And Oh my gosh, dude, oh, wow. it's huge! This afternoon is going to get real good. The beach is a little steep and the tide's kind of high, so we have some kind of wonk and backwash. It's a little bit dangerous right now. But, um, oh my gosh. Oh, look at this thing. I missed one or two really good ones too. So they're out there, but you know, we're playing a little bit of in and out, right and left game. Uh, there's some waves that you can catch further out, but I'd say most of them you gotta be kind of in and underneath them, but they're not the biggest ones. So you wanna stay out to catch the biggest ones. Like you're trying to figure out how to play the game a little bit um, to maximize that 30 minutes. My name is Ezra Rodriguez. Welcome back. You are watching Board Stories. Board Stories is back. We're at the 2023 
Backdoor Shootout presented by Keiki Bungalows. Live Aloha. One of those exceptional days where, you know, people are going to be getting the wave of a lifetime, maybe. It's like the best be event of the whole world, because surfing pipeline with just your friends or your team is something that you can't compare to anything else. There's been some incredible rides. A highlight for me was definitely watching Moana get her big pipeline barrel yesterday after the horn. You know, the swell's not backing up. It's just getting bigger, so I feel like it's just going to, this could be the best day of the year right here. Beyond, beyond my words. So. stories. There are so many ways to ride a wave and the Dehui Backdoor Shootout featured wave sliding diversity. Let's take a look at the longboarding and the stand-up paddling divisions. Blue skies, it's a sunshiny day. Good and good weather makes you feel no
gets the dinner, you keep the skies clear. Blue skies, it's a sunshiny day. The backdoor shootout is similar to the Eddie I Cow Big Wave event using a no elimination format. Billy Kemper, Makua Rothman, and Kala Grace all wound up with serious injuries, and while luckily everyone is recovering, wipeouts come with the territory. It's never a question of if, but more so when. Any surfer, pro or novice, big or small, ready or not, will succumb to wipeouts. Okay, wipeouts? I'll tell you something about wipeouts. If I don't have like at least one horrendous wipeout, every session or every couple of sessions, it means I'm probably not sending it hard enough. It's human to make mistakes, and while doing it surfing, the result is a white, watery, salty tumble at the very least, and sometimes much worse. Talk to me about wiping out. Is it something you can plan for or something you can avoid? Definitely wiping out, there's no way to avoid it, you know, especially if you're putting yourself out there in a place to get a reward, there's usually high risk. So high risk, high reward, you're gonna wipe out and you're gonna play. You're gonna break your board, you're gonna break your body. So hopefully you're tough enough to endure the outcome. Show me what happened here. Let's check this out. This doesn't look like a normal rocker. pulled in behind the peak and the wave stretched out a little bit. I was way too deep and glad my board broke and not my body. Yeah, pay to play. Surfers are dealing with many elements and in waves of consequence like pipeline and back door, there's many dangers. Large amounts of gravity, inertia, shallow reef, and literally tons upon tons of water. Jump and you land right here, you're fine. If you jump out here, you're not so fine. <laughs> I see many wipeouts here. I think everyone's least favorite wipeouts are the ones that are like unexpected and all of a sudden they're just like eating <laughs> That's never a good feeling, so I think everyone has their fair share of those. It's definitely something you, you try to avoid, but it's inevitable you go over the handlebars and and that's what's great about surfing is it's so humbling. You, you know, you, you think you get one really good wave and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get another one. And then you just get, you eat the biggest humble pie ever and you get a good laugh at yourself and you know, your friends are laughing and it, it's something that it, it just keeps you grounded, keeps you like realizing that as uh, on top of the world as you can feel after riding a really good wave that the ocean can humble you real quick. <laughs> Welcome back to Board Stories TV, I'm Mike Latronic. And you know, many people were calling the wave for this event the very best of the whole season. With so many epic tubes and high scoring rides, it was tough to pick a winner. But guess what? There's gonna be a winner, and we're gonna show you soon. Huge props to all the athletes at the Hui's Backdoor Shootout. Man, that was basically a gladiator pit. So Hawaiian surfer Kala Grace, although he got a paycheck, placed high, he nearly lost his life with a serious head injury at the Pipeline Reef. Pipeline is one of the most dangerous waves in the whole world, and Kala on his way back out had an unfortunate situation. Luckily, the Hawaiian Water Patrol was right there, 
to bring him back to land safely and to revive him. We got to chat with Claude Grace, so we say aloha for now and we leave you up close and personal with him. I surf because it's in my blood. I surf because just that feeling you get riding a wave or being in the ocean. Surfing just my passion. I'm in the water all day, every day, no matter what. I never really thought about why. But growing up, I had the best of both worlds. My dad lived in Waikiki. My mom lived out here. So I got to surf the North Shore in the winter, or Waikiki in the summer. I actually was scared of surfing for a while growing up. I didn't know how to swim until I was like eight years old. We did it all. Longboard, shortboard, stand-up, whatever, canoe, whatever there was on the beach in Waikiki, we did. Well, once I transitioned to the North Shore, like from Waikiki, it was just strictly Rocky Point, and that's it. I surfed there every day. Me and all my friends, that was our spot. While Kala and his friends would enjoy hot dogging at Rocky Point, it was soon apparent Kala had aspirations at a different surf break. Pipeline on a good day is the most rewarding, um, probably the best drug you're ever gonna take. You show up on a on a 10 foot day, glassy, you'll see like 200 guys lined up waiting for their dose. Whether they get it or they don't get it, they'll be back the next day for more. It's the gnarliest wave in the world. Kills more people every year than, than any other wave. Can be the biggest reward ever or the worst, the worst day of your life. So some of my first real waves at Pipe, probably for a year or two or three, I would completely black out on the drop, kick out and not, not really remember what happened. It was just like so gnarly that I didn't really like, kind of forget that the moment you kick out. And then once you do it more and more, you can kind of slow it down when you're in the barrel and and kind of know what's going on. But some barrels are the fastest, loudest, most violent thing you've ever been in in your life. And you'll come out, some barrels, like this one in particular, just super slow motion, super beautiful, super clear. You see everything, you know exactly where you are. So it's totally different. Each experience is totally different. I've seen Uncle Derek, Uncle Mike, Mason, like all my family members. And then eventually wanting to surf there, it took years and years of sitting on the shoulder and watching the, the big dogs do their thing to eventually even make it to the peak, to getting that first taste. So that's a, that's a whole process in itself. But once you do get the real first taste, you'll be back for more. And that was me. I always wanted bigger and better. But yeah, it took me a really long time to find that. I was scared. I still am scared, but n not like how I was before. I want to be the man out here. It feels good, you know, it feels good getting the wave of the day. 